Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. Ryan Humiston recently purchased Electromyography, that's EMG, equipment, naming it a game changer. It seems he plans to make a series of videos evaluating the best exercises for each muscle group using this EMG equipment, believing this is truly science-based. Many of his fans love that idea and are highly anticipating future EMG videos. But as we'll dissect in this video, the prevailing scientific literature indicates EMG has several flaws that render it extremely limited in inferring the best exercises for hypertrophy. I would go so far as to say that any of Ryan's conclusions from his EMG equipment have a high probability of just being plain wrong or at least misleading. First things first, I never actually plan to make videos on anybody else's content. This will probably be the only exception. I felt this video had to be made, as not only are many of my subscribers subbed to Ryan's channel, but his triceps EMG video was amongst the most watched by my subs. Viewers deserve to know just how limited EMG is in reality, before they go about changing their own training based on shoddy data. This absolutely isn't a personal attack on Ryan whatsoever, rather it's a scientifically critical examination of what he shares in his recent videos. EMG is said to measure muscle activation, not only by Ryan but by multiple scientific researchers too. The problem, as detailed in this 2017 article, is this isn't precisely true. Muscle activation is when the force generating components within muscle fibers are in motion. Strapping electrodes to a muscle doesn't record this. So what does it record? Remember the reason a muscle activates in the first place is that it receives electrical signals from the brain and spinal cord. EMG measures the strength of these electrical nerve signals delivered to the muscle. The term for this is neuromuscular excitation. Now, neuromuscular excitation comes before muscle activation, but there are some steps between them, meaning there isn't always a one-to-one -one relationship between neuromuscular excitation and muscle activation. Fatigue, dynamic contractions, or fluctuating neural input can blur the relationship between neuromuscular excitation and muscle activation. So EMG measures neuromuscular excitation, not truly muscle activation. But guess what? This is also somewhat of a lie, as EMG does not reliably measure neuromuscular excitation. A 2017 Italian study wonderfully illustrates this. These researchers electrically stimulated the tibialis anterior muscle of subjects at a constant intensity at three different foot angles. Because the researchers electrically stimulated the muscle at a constant intensity at all three foot angles, rather than the subjects producing their own voluntary muscle forces, actual neuromuscular excitation would have been the same at all three foot angles. If EMG reliably measured neuromuscular excitation, it should find the same amplitude across the three different foot angles. But this did not happen. The EMG recording showed different amplitudes at each three different foot angles. So this study demonstrates even if actual neuromuscular excitation is the same, simply changing angles can produce different EMG recordings. This matters as if we're comparing EMG recordings between exercises training a muscle at subtly different angles, we can get different EMG recordings unrelated to actual neuromuscular excitation differences. A muscle's recruitment strategy can also influence the EMG recordings independent of actual neuromuscular excitation changes. Remember muscles contain many, many fibers. As a fun fact, it's estimated the mere biceps contains anywhere from 172,000 to 418,000 muscle fibers. These muscle fibers are layered, and even if actual neuromuscular excitation is kept the same, a muscle that recruits fibers from the deep to superficial level would produce different EMG recordings to a muscle that recruits fibers from the superficial to deep level. This is notable because if during an exercise, we see higher EMG recordings with one muscle versus another muscle, that muscle may not be truly experiencing greater neuromuscular excitation. Rather, the different EMG recordings could be down to recruitment strategies. In the scientific literature, EMG recordings are consistently higher when training with heavier loads versus lighter loads, even if repetitions are performed to failure in both situations. This is a powerful argument against EMG's ability to infer muscle growth, 
as we know long-term research that actually measures muscle growth consistently finds both heavier and lighter loads are similar for muscle growth when reps are performed to or close to failure. Thus, when comparing EMG recordings between exercises, if one is technically heavier loading, it can produce higher EMG recordings even though it might not actually be more hypertrophic. As a potential example, Ryan found that compared to close grip push-ups, dips produced higher EMG signals from the triceps heads. I have a feeling this might be because dips are technically heavier loading versus close grip push-ups. If we compared the exercises with reps performed to failure in a long-term study design that measured muscle growth after, triceps gains could be similar between them, as is the case when comparing heavy and light load training to failure. Your muscles actually have elements in their force generating units that can produce passive forces when stretched and EMG does not measure any of these passive forces as it only records electrical stuff. This is noteworthy, as the literature indicates passive tension stimulates muscle growth. For example, a new German study indicates that intense static stretching of the calves produced notable gastrocnemius growth. Matter of fact, the magnitudes of gastrocnemius growth were similar to what's seen in studies that train with seated and standing calf raises. Furthermore, exercises training muscles in stretched positions seem to be more powerful for hypertrophy. We thoroughly examined this literature in our previous video. A strong reason for this is passive forces at stretched muscle lengths augment the active contractor forces, thereby leading to a more potent muscle building stimulus. So EMG does nothing to inform us of these potentially critical passive forces. This might relate to another one of Ryan's findings. He states incline curls poorly hit the long biceps head and it hit the brachialis more. Yet we know incline curls would train the long head in a stretched position and again, EMG does not pick up on stretch. Given that other evidence indicates stretch in an exercise is favourable for hypertrophy, it's sensible to hypothesize incline curls would indeed be great for long head biceps gains. It's crystal clear to see EMG has several flaws that preclude its usefulness in comparing the muscle growth value of different exercises. Now, there might be some situations in which EMG may be potentially useful. Comparing EMG recordings between two exercises involving similar relative loading and angles might not be that bad. For example, comparing equivalently loaded weighted push-ups to bench presses with a similar range of motion may be an alright comparison with EMG. Comparing EMG recordings before and after a training program in the same person may also be an alright thing to do. Finally, comparing EMG recordings on the same exercise between different individuals might potentially be an okay way to assess muscle recruitment differences between people, though there are some potential pitfalls with this one specifically. In any event, long-term research comparing actual measures of muscle growth after training with different exercises is going to be the highest quality data we have for inferring the most favourable hypertrophy exercises. This is the data we commonly review at the House of Hypertrophy. If you've made it here, I have a free ebook you might like. The Ultimate Guide to Bench Pressing for Strength and Hypertrophy with more than 100 scientific references. From technique to training variables to comparisons and other fascinating science, we cover it all. Grab it through the link in the description or comments.